I love it. That's good. That was really girly. Well done, team. Love that. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of your Friday Mustard Show. Now, in a second, we'll be discussing how to eat smart and save money with Norfolk's Planning Save campaign. Yes, plus YouTube star and chef Ian Haste will be giving us some tips on creating simple but delicious meals. But coming up right now, we've got another helping of our Love Norwich series from City College Norwich. And tonight, Danny Lawrence is in the dance studio with the Urban Street Dance Crew to talk World Championships. Being part of a dance crew is a great opportunity for young people in Norfolk. Many of them dream to dance alongside some of the UK's best dancers. I'm here in Fetford, where Urban Street Dance Crew had the opportunity to go to the World Championships for Street Dance and come home with two awards. Let's meet the crew. It all started over here probably about 15 years ago. I've been involved for around five to six years now. The previous owners moved on, so I had my child in the dance group, so I wanted it to carry on, so I continued doing it. I started dancing when I was seven years old. I practiced every week, well, I tried to fit in a practice every week so I could make it better. I think the children benefit with this group. It gets a lot of them off the streets, um, gives them something to do, keeps them active. Turn me up, turn me up. The championships, I think our achievement was making it there in the first place. Um, it's hard to go for the regionals and getting more children there this year than we have done before, so that's really great. It's definitely intimidating at Worlds because you've got um, lots of dance groups there that have been on TV and still on TV, so it's, yeah, it's very intimidating. Uh, my support was great when I went to the World Championships. Uh, I could hear them in the crowd like cheering me on, so it made me even more confident. I would definitely go to Worlds again. I think it's a great experience and you meet like a lot of inspirational people, so get new ideas and like creative. My confidence when I'm dancing in front of people is better than when I'm not because it's more of an atmosphere, so it makes you dance better. My goal for the dance group was to involve as many children in the local community as I possibly could and build on it from there, really. The goal has definitely been achieved. We have almost 100 children now dancing with us. This school means a lot to me as it's where I've kind of grown up here, so like, come here every week and, I don't know, kind of grow up together and it's quite fun. My advice for people that want to get involved in dance is join a local club, even if you don't want to take it serious, just a fun club and fun hobby to have. Well done. I'm really proud of you tonight. Good girl. See you Thursday. So good. They yes, were brilliant. so talented. How are your dance moves? I think you know. I don't know. You're quite They're tall. Good. You could kind of. Yeah, could you be part of an urban dance street dance group? Some flowing urban moves. Right. I have all of them. Mm, got such a visual right now, I see. I see. <laughs> now, how does your food shop pest you every week? Are you racking up a bigger grocery bill every time or do you find yourself having food you don't need? How much gets forgotten about and ends up in the bin? Yeah, all good questions, but no more because our next guests have just the top tips to get you shopping savvy, eating smart and saving money. So let's not wait any further. It's time for Foodie Friday. And behind the Norfolk Plan Eat Save campaign, we're welcomed by Martina and Ian. Hello! Hello. 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 Multiple <laughs> applause! Thank you so much for coming in. Pleasure. And thank you for bringing snacks. We have food. We get so <laughs> spoiled food. on Foodie Friday. But this is a really interesting topic that we've actually not had a chance to discuss, really, not on really. this show before, which is food wastage. And which is a really big problem in this country. So talk me through it. How did you first come on to, to this kind of topic? Well, um, food waste is a huge issue. Um, you know, people are wasting their money as well as wasting good food, and then, and, you know, um, uh, it's not good for the environment. Yeah. Um, um, the average family uh, wastes enough food um, 
for sixty pounds a month. So that could be sixty pounds a yes. month. Yes. Wow, yeah. which across yeah. the year is yeah. really going to add up. It's seven hundred pounds per year. And, and is that generally from um, thinking that you're going to eat more than you end up eating, or being a bit, oh, I'll have time to cook that, and then you don't, and then it goes off? Like, what is yeah. kind of the root cause of this? The main reason why people waste food is because they buy too much or cook too much, or they don't use it in date. Because right. people then will throw it away, think, look, rummaging through their fridge and thinking, actually, well, that's gone, that's gone, and then they chuck it out. Yeah. And it's a real shame, because mm. uh, when you know your dates, often people go by the best before date, but it's actually the use by date that you have to worry about. The best before date is just mm. the quality. So lots of people throwing out food too early that's actually yes. right yeah. to eat. Yeah, I'm a bit right. of a gambler when it comes yeah, to I... the best before date. I'm always like, you know that's what, why I'm going gonna... to put it in, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just see how I get. Always <laughs> ill. <laughs> So I think it's a, then you end up wasting uh, it. Just not, not chicken, that I'm <laughs> <laughs> We want people to be safe, obviously, yeah, with of it. And uh, so, if, um, if for example, the, the food approaches its use by date, the best way to, to use it is to put it in a freezer. And there's so right. many things you can freeze. You know, from yogurts and milk um, to grated cheese. People don't often oh, think about cheese. Oh, never freeze cheese. Yes, I'm cheese. Cheese. Yeah, it's on cheese. You're not allowed dairy anyway. Oh, so. yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, well, are you off dairy, are you? I am at the moment, yeah. We were just discussing it in part one, but it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, but yeah, no, okay, so putting things in the freezer and being not, you know, not silly kind of brave, but not always too rigid no, in those dates. No, and I think often people don't know, for example, with leftovers, you know, they think it's one day in the fridge, that's it, and then you have to chuck it. But actually, two days in the fridge is absolutely fine for leftovers. And again, if you have, for example, people take out the mince to cook it, and then and the mince was frozen, and then they are worried about freezing it again, but that's absolutely fine again. So you can freeze it again, and that's another one. And that freezer should be really your best friend. Sorry. An extra, like a, a boss button, doesn't it? Should it? Be. it should should be more a bigger freezer, smaller fridge. So Which nobody you, does. No one does. I do. Yeah. Do you? I, I do. I, I freeze everything. Well I done. Do. No, I definitely perfect do. Perfect example yeah. then, really, because most people don't do it. Um, so things like things like when you get your chicken breast, get them home, separate it straight away out of the packet. So you've got put five in, in there. Bags. Little bags. Put them in the freezer yeah. instead of the fridge. It's and then you feel like stuff. you're winning anyway, just because you're so organised. You you I do. love that. <laughs> Never that organised. But also this whole using things up and making them like making new things through leftovers mm. is. Something that I never think of, but that's about getting brave in the kitchen, right? And I'm looking at our chef. Yes, yes. indeed. Because it's, yeah. thing, it's things like that that you need to start thinking about. Yeah, well, it, none of this is rocket science, really. It's such a simple campaign, isn't mm. it, really? It's just about sitting down, looking what you've got ingredient-wise, and then going back to the old days, doing batch cooking. Mm. Things like chilli con carnes, curries, big hearty dishes mm, which you can chili. make, freeze them, again, put them into little containers. No one really fancies eating things two days in a row. That's probably one of the biggest problems that we have in the UK. So the next day you're a bit bored of it, it might sit in the fridge, it might go out of date. Stick it in the freezer and just put them into little measuring tubs and just freeze the lot. And what's been the response to this campaign so far? Are people kind of on board with it or, yeah? Oh, we're, we're so lucky. We're so we're chuffed with it, aren't we? We've had such a fantastic response. It's, a, it's on Instagram, it's on Facebook, it's on Twitter. And we've had a, we've got a, you know, since we launched it back in June with a soft launch. And then in September, we had the big bush with a cookery demonstration by Ian. Um, and then, you know, we were all up and running. We're also challenging people to take the Norfolk Food Waste Challenge. So that's another element to it. But uh, the social media platforms have all got the, the top tips that Ian just mentioned there, mm. like freezing the chickens and recipe ideas, so people can really get stuck in. And every Friday, which ties in nicely with yes. you guys, every Friday, <laughs> we love it. A top tip coming out, so little <laughs> things like, uh, for example, did you know when you've got an avocado, half of an avocado, and you leave the stone in, Oh. That makes the avocado last much longer. Yes! Life Ta hack! <laughs> I love it! <laughs> Perfect! I love so avocado. lots of those uh, on, on our uh, social media platforms. Great. So. We'll, we'll pop the social media on the screen so that people know because they can follow you on Facebook, Twitter and mm. Instagram. All of the Absolutely. tips are there. Right. And that £60 um, that you talked about, you're yep. saving people that money. Have people got in touch to say how much of a difference this has made? Well, yes. So this, we are trying to encourage people to take up the challenge for the Norfolk Food Waste Challenge, which you can find out uh, more about on our um, recycling for Norfolk website and you can sign up there as well but we did sort of a little um, case study to begin with so we challenged a normal Norfolk family can you do it we were intrigued if it's actually possible and that family has managed to save 40 pounds worth of food that they would have normally thrown away Wow plus so that's not all that's just the food that they would have chucked out uh, plus another 40 pounds um, that money that they have saved by buying less so by being savvy when you said earlier shopping shopping savvy is really key planning is a, is a, control. Yep, mm. it's a real uh, a, a key element as well, uh, and they've managed to save sort of nearly eighty pounds. And Ian, very very quickly, you got we brought some food in which mm. you've made us today. These are all things that were kind of leftover 
that you've made into breakfast parts. Yeah, so these are just uh, this is just a typical example. Really. Yeah. If you've got things that these were made for like a Christmas type recipe, so things like nuts, um, cranberries, mm. um, anything that you've got left over from Christmas, we just mixed it up with a little bit of granola, some honey, um, some dark chocolate, and they're perfect. They'll keep for a good what seven or eight days. So Delicious. Have and if people want more tips like this from yourself, where can they do? Because your your YouTube channel, what's that? Yeah, you can go along to um, either Haste Kitchen, which is my website, or we can go along to Plan Eat Save, which is an app Plan Eat Save. Um, loads of top tips on there as well. It's about five or six different recipes on there as well, which link back to live videos. Shows Amazing. What's and they're keeping it up to date, so there'll always be something new there yeah, as well. Yeah, brilliant. Mm. So thank you so yes. much thank for popping so in much. and oh, thanks. It's, it's really something different to think about. Yes, I'm have another Lovely minute. to meet you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Right, that is where we must round up this evening, I'm afraid. We've had a good time though, haven't we? Brilliant time. And remember to check our social media pages for all the info on how to win that meal for two at the library restaurant in our Valentine's Day competition. Next week, it's a theatre extravaganza. On the sofa will be theatre critic Eve Stebbing and the Playhouse director Caroline Richardson. Plus, join Helen and Nicholas on Monday for Chroma's answer to the first date's That's restaurant. Be fun. So good. <laughs> and some giant knitting needles as they talk Makers Month at the forum. Lots to look forward to. But for now, have a lovely weekend, people. Goodbye. Bye.